No doubt you've heard this saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, this is particularly poignant for today's film, which I hope you'll look up after watching this video. You see, despite being over 100 years old, and all the huge developments that have happened in cinema during that time, D.W. Griffith's 1916 epic Intolerance has a surprising amount in common with contemporary epic blockbusters. You might not see it at first, but look past the tinted black and white silent film and slightly pantomime acting, and you'll see many of today's filmmaking techniques in their infancy. Techniques that paved the way for standard filmmaking practice. You'll see staging and production values that still dazzle even now. You'll see editing and camera work that stand out among its 20th century peers. Simply put, to say intolerance raised the bar on what could be achieved on film would be a gross understatement, and it's why it's a film that you really need to watch. One of the first things that struck me when I watched Intolerance was how avant-garde its narrative structure was for the time. Again, echoing the idea that the more things change, the more they stay the same, we're told four parallel narratives spanning 2,500 years of history, each which demonstrate humankind's inherent hatred and intolerance. This is achieved through cross-cutting, allowing all four time periods to show each narrative play out at once, a technique so new and radical at the time that we're given an explanation at the start of the film so not to confuse the audience. This might seem comical and obvious by today's standards, but consider how sophisticated your film palette is compared to audiences at the dawn of cinema. Cross-cutting is commonplace in today's cinema, and you'll recognize its use without question, particularly in climactic scenes in films like Star Wars, where we see Luke's battle with Vader, the rebel assault force on Endor, and the space battle all playing out at once. Or how about the even more complex use of multi-narrative cross-cutting in Cloud Atlas, which spans six timelines? Would these films have been dreamt of, and the audience have been able to understand them without the likes of intolerance to explore the narrative possibilities of film? Another groundbreaking aspect of intolerance becomes apparent when we put it alongside some of the films that preceded it in 1916. What similarities do you notice in these early classics? The staging kind of looks like a play, doesn't it? It's logical that when film was brand new, that filmmakers looked to theatre for inspiration. Film was effectively a recorded play, so to represent it as a static wide shot to show as much of the action as possible made sense. So, when films like Intolerance came along and threw in a little... What was that? Yes, I'm talking about the close-up. Again, something we take for granted today, but one that opened up new doors for filmmakers to guide the audience's eye or to illustrate performances of actors that meant they could be far more subtle and less melodramatic than in a long shot. This gave filmmakers another tool, along with the obvious mise-en-scene and music, with which to make meaning, and it meant that... Whoa, whoa what was that? A dolly shot! So close-ups weren't the only camera technique employed by Griffiths to add more additional meaning to the scene. A whole range of camera techniques are on display here, and although Intolerance wasn't necessarily the first film to use these techniques, it's widely accepted that many of them were used so masterfully in this film that it set the bar for how they could be employed. No longer were film shots as static as theatre stages, now the camera could navigate them and open up the scene. Next up, I want to talk about the scale and production values of this epic, which stand head and shoulders above other films of the time. Intolerance is believed to have cost around $2 million, easily smashing records for film production, and it kept the record for over a decade. It doesn't take long to see where the cash was splashed when you see scenes like this. This set for the Babylonian part of the film is part of cinema legend. For years, the colossal set dominated the Los Angeles skyline, a mark of Griffith's dedication to making a landmark film. The set was so large, it could be seen from across the city. And then there's the extras. It's believed that up to 16,000 extras were used for some of the shots. And although we now have films which have trumped this, just see the CG scenes of Lord of the Rings or Avengers Endgame. Is that everyone? Like you wanted more? Intolerance did it all for real. These are actual sets, actual people charging into battle. And the results are as stunning today as they were 100 years ago. D.W. Griffiths represents a type of filmmaker that dreams big, with towering production values and uncompromising standards. Intolerance ultimately put Griffiths out of business, 
but set the standard for how cinema could be a spectacle and undoubtedly paved the way for the likes of Ben-Hur and Cleopatra. In recent generations, this accolade for excessively expensive films that keep raising the bar has belonged to visionaries such as James Cameron with Titanic and later Avatar, and Peter Jackson with The Hobbit and King Kong. But even against these blockbusters, Intolerance stands out for its ambition. I'm hoping I've convinced you to give this oldie a go. It definitely deserves any film fan's respect, despite being a little bit slow by today's standards. So here are a few things you should look out for if you decide to watch it. When you see the cross-cutting in action, pay attention to the speed at which we jump between timelines. This again is masterful film craft at work, as the cutting gets faster and faster the nearer we get to the film's climax. In this sense, it really is no different to how blockbuster epics are usually cut today. You should also look out for other, more contemporary editing techniques that you'll find precious little of in other early 20th century films. Eyeline matching, match on action, see what you can spot. When you see the epic depictions of Babylon, armies charging, the crucifixion of Christ, remind yourself that this is all real. There's no CG backdrops or digital extras. Every set and extra is real, and that's incredible. Also look out for over-enthusiastic performances. Apparently, some of the battle scenes saw extras getting so into character that one day's filming saw 60 people injured. Finally, whilst you watch, consider the fact that this film was completely unscripted. It's hard to believe, but Griffiths drafted the film so many times that the various notes became overwhelming for him. Instead, he held the entire picture in his head and directed from memory. And that's insane. So, there you have it. Despite today's IMAX, 3D films, CGI and cross-media productions, when we look back, is this film really all that different? Let me know what you think in the comments below, where you'll also find a link to watch the movie for free as it's now part of the public domain. Thanks for watching.